It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be writing and creating equations of lines. We're going to be using slope and talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. Here we go. Our question has four parts. We're given line K that is shown on this coordinate plane that we will use for all four parts. Here's part A. We're asked, what is the slope of line K? Show or explain how you got your answer. So here's where you pause the video, you find the slope of line K, and then come back to see my solution. Welcome back. Here's the solution to part A. We want to find the slope of line K. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So slope can be equal to rise over run. Slope is a ratio. It tells us the steepness of a line. Also tells us the direction of a line. When we read a graph, we read from left to right. So if a slope is going down left to right, sloping downward, then on the graph it would have a negative slope. If left to right it's increasing from left to right, then it would have a positive slope. When we talk about a real world problem, typically there's no positive or negative. We just talk about the steepness because it depends on what side of the object or landform you're looking at when we talk about the steepness. So here we go, rise over run. We're going to start at any, any point. You can start here or you could start here. I'm going to start to the right. I'm going to rise and run to get to the next point on the line. So our rise is three. Our run is going to be negative because I'm going left on our coordinate plane. And I'm going to go left and you count all your units. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're going to write that as our ratio. Our rise was positive three. We went up and our left direction went negative six. We're going to simplify this. Three over negative six simplifies to negative one half. So now we know that the slope of line K is negative one half. And if we use this as our ratio of rise to run, we can rise one, run negative two, we're on the line. Rise one, run negative two, we're on the line. Our second way to find slope is to use the slope formula, which shows us our rise as the difference between the y coordinates between the two points over our run, the difference between the x coordinates of our two points, which is exactly what we did. Now we're just doing it mathematically instead of counting on a graph. So if you didn't have a coordinate plane in front of you, this is what you would want to do. So let's identify our y coordinates. Our first point here, or our second point when we did it, our y coordinate is 5, and our second y coordinate is 2, and it doesn't matter what order, as long as if this determines point 2, you use it as point 2 in both the numerator and the denominator. So y2, I'm going to say is 5, and y1 is 2, so 5 subtract 2, and that's going to be over the difference of the x coordinates. So our first or second x coordinate here, negative 4, and then the other is 2. So then our denominator is negative 4 subtract 2. 5 subtract 2 is 3. Negative 4 subtract 2 is negative 6. Ratio 3 to negative 6, which is what we got when we did rise over run. And that also simplifies to negative 1 half. Therefore, we can confirm that the slope of line K is negative 1 half. Let's move on to part B. Part B, line P, is parallel to line K. Remember, we have the line K we had from part A. The y-intercept of line P is the point 0, negative 4. And you are asked to create an equation that represents line P. Here's where you pause the video, you do your best work, and then come back to see my work. Welcome back. Here, we are creating an equation to represent line P. We're told that line P is parallel to line K. Here we have line K that we started with in part A, and we already found that that slope is negative one half. So I'm bringing that information forward. Now we're told that the line P that we're writing the equation for is parallel to this line K. Parallel lines are lines that have the same slope and different Y intercepts. So we know that line K is gonna have a slope of negative one half. Now we need to find its Y intercept. We're told that the y-intercept of line P is the point 0, negative 4. So we're already given all the information we need. So let's plot this point. 
because we know that when we're given a y-intercept, this represents b. So 0, negative 4, here's my point, which is my y-intercept of the line parallel to line k. And to write an equation, we're going to use slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. We know that the line is parallel, so therefore it has a slope of negative 1 half, and we were given that the y-intercept is negative 4. So the line y equals negative 1 half x subtract 4 will be parallel. So let's use this slope and our y-intercept. So we're going to rise 1 and run negative 2 to plot another point and draw our line, and we can see that they are parallel, and there we have created the equation that represents line p, which is parallel to line k. Moving on to part c, we're told that line r passes through the points negative 2, 1, and 1, 0. You're asked, is line r parallel to line k? And explain your reasoning. Go ahead and pause the video now, determine whether or not they're parallel, and come back and hit play to see. Welcome back. So again, we're given a new line, line k, we're bringing forward from part a and part b. So we know that line r is going to pass through the points negative 2, 1, plot that point, and 1, 0. So 1, 0 will be right here, and we can draw our line. We can already see that it doesn't look parallel, but seeing isn't explaining our reasoning. So now when we want to talk about being parallel, we are going to find our slopes because we know that the slopes of two lines are equal if they are parallel. So we're going to rise 1 and run negative 3 to find the slope of line r. We already know that to be parallel that this slope right here, line k, has a slope of negative 1 half. We've already found that in our previous parts. So seeing as parallel lines have to have the same slope, we can stop right there. Line R is not parallel to line K since they do not have the same slope. So there we have part C. Moving on to part D. We're told that line S is perpendicular to line K. Line S passes through the point 5, negative 2. You're asked to create an equation that represents line S. So here's where you pause the video, create your equation, and then come back to see my work. Welcome back. So we are creating an equation to represent line S, and we're told that line S is perpendicular to line K. Let's understand perpendicular lines. So line S is going to pass through the point 5, negative 2, 5, negative 2, and we've plotted the information given to us. And then the other bit is we know that we have perpendicular lines. So for two lines to be perpendicular in the coordinate plane, the product of their slopes must be negative 1. We call this in math opposite reciprocals. So let's bring forward what we learned in parts previous to this, that line k has a slope of negative 1 half. So a line perpendicular to this line has to have a slope that's the opposite reciprocal of this, which would be the opposite sign, so it's going to be positive, and then reciprocal, you flip. So positive 2 would be the slope of this line S if it's perpendicular. 2 multiplied by negative 1 half is going to be negative 1. So anytime you take a number and multiply it by its reciprocal, you get 1. Seeing these have two different signs, that product would be negative 1. So now we know the sign, uh, the slope and sign of that slope for line S has to have a slope of 2. Now we need to find its y-intercept. Well, this gets a little trickier because if I go and I use my slope to plot another point, I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. We have our slope and we use it to plot our point, but we can't find our y-intercept from that because when we graph this line, it on our coordinate plane won't cross the y-axis in our view. So you could make your coordinate plane bigger, but on an exam, that would be difficult to do here. So rather than guessing, let's go ahead and do it algebraically. So we are going to understand that this point that is on line S was given to us. That represents a specific x and y value that make this equation true. So we're going to put in negative 2 for y, we know our slope is 2. We know that when 
y is negative 2, x must be 5, and then all that we're missing is b, our y-intercept. So if we solve this, we'll solve for our y-intercept. So 2 times 5 is 10, and now we're going to subtract 10 from each side to solve for b. Negative 2 and negative 10 are negative 12, so we know our y-intercept is negative 12, and now we can create the equation of our perpendicular line s. So y is going to be equal to our positive 2 slope x subtract 12, which is our y-intercept, and this is the equation of line d. And there you have creating the equations of lines using slope, the idea of parallel and perpendicular, and the relationship of slope. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day, and I hope you come back soon.